welcome back to the channel. Right. I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago, um, I thought I'd had a right result on eBay and I bought a couple of Tom Waits albums, um, Rain Dogs and Bone Machine. And obviously when I got them home, duh, realised they was bootlegs and even though Rain Dogs looked brand new when I played it, they had quite some bad, it had quite a lot of bad crackles and pops all over it. So, a bit of a bummer really. Yeah, I can see him over there on a chair. Um, a little bit gay, but it is what it is, like I always say. But then the wife called me in um, the lounge the other night. She was on her laptop working away, as she always does. She went, oh, I bought you something. And I've gone over there, and she's only ordered me Rain Dogs on vinyl, an original that she's got, with the lyric sheet and all that. It hasn't arrived yet, but... I'm quite excited about that. And um, I was over the moon. I thought, what? An original copy? Yes. Um, she went, no, I know. Hey, I've got you this one as well. She only located me a copy of Soulfish Trombones. I love this album. This is the start of the trilogy. But what a brilliant wife. She's better at it than I am. She actually told me, don't you do the buying. Leave it to me. Because uh, she actually checked out the eBay buyer and it did say this is a copy in small print, but me getting all excited. Oh, got to get it on record. It's £200 on Amazon. <sighs> Unbelievable. She truly is amazing. Really is, really is amazing. I'm a lucky guy. And Ian G, I did see your comment and I checked out Discogs and you're right. I see Bone Machine for less than 50 English pounds. It was in Euros, it was abroad, I think. But they're on there. So, nice one for that fella. Much appreciated. Really, really is. Because, like the Beatles, like Pink Floyd. Sorry, Floyd fans, I've been a bit slow lately. But, you know, bear with me. And Tom Waits. They're, you know, for me, these are just must-haves. There's so many other albums, and I'm going to do a video on album wants very soon. It's just a list, really, you know. But I've been writing down ones that I did own or I want to own on vinyl. Yeah, I know, it's getting quite long, the list. So, so the wife got me uh, Sawfish Trombones. And it's a proper, all the lyrics inside. Look, the real deal. So I'm really looking forward to putting that on. So let's have a little talk about Sawfish Trombones before we start. <laughs> Sawfish Trombones is a seventh studio album by Tom Waits and a break from Electra Records and a massive shift from the drunken piano barroom jazz type music that everybody had heard from Tom up until now into a world of freaks and misfits and circus folk and Frank. Swordfish Trombones was recorded in August 1982 and was released in September 1983. And between Heart Attack and Vine, Tom's previous album, good album by the way, uh, in 1980, to Swordfish Trombones in 83, Tom had got rid of his manager, his producer and his record company. I think it was about this time as well that he'd met his wife and collaborator, Kathleen Brennan. What a collaboration they are. Tom had a little trouble finding a record label for the album, which was recorded like 13 months earlier. And critics said, it sounds weird and it's got no chance of selling. But then Island Records signed Tom and Sawfish Trombone was unleashed on the world. And the cover art is Tintone. A photograph by Michael A. Russ. I've seen a couple of other photos from this shoot as well. Awesome, awesome. I think these are a couple of actors as well. Um, but yeah, and this is a little bit of artwork by Tom's wife, Kathleen Brennan. So, oh, the start of it. I mean, I love all weights. 
literally from closing time right away through, like I've said before. But I do think this, the three in the 80s, the, the, the Frank's Wild Years and Rain Dogs and this really touched a nerve. I mean, Frank's Wild Years really, that's the one that started me off. Heard it at work that day, ended up buying it on the way home from work. Completely blown away. So, I suppose it's time to get it on the record deck, isn't it? Let's do this. So, rain dogs. Actually, I like to be able to see the vinyls when I get them out, so I'm just going to change my glasses quick. That's better. Right, so. Swordfish trombone. An official album. Obviously, it's not brand new, so it has been opened, but I've not opened it yet, so I've not seen the the label or stuff, even the condition of the vinyl, so. That's actually in surprisingly good condition, just a few little bits of dust on there, and a hair. Swordfish trombone. So, starts off with Underground. I'll be back in a little while. Well, that sounded amazing. That sounded so good, considering it's a very old 1983 album. And it blows the CD out of the water. I'm not even joking. It was warm. The clangy bits were really clangy and predominant. The guitar riffs were popping out of the speakers. It sounded terrific. Right. Let's go through the tracks. Right. Side one kicks off with Underground. And has like a stomping romper sound percussion. And some really twangy guitar, and Tom Waits' his howling, growly voice. Pretty creepy, but like boom, boom, boom. Perfect way to start this album off. You're thinking, what the heck is this I'm listening to? And it proper gets your attention. And then track two is Shore Leave. Now, this is the story of a guy. Uh, narrating the story and writing a letter to his wife while on a shore leave in the Philippines somewhere. Tom narrates and describes the seedy underworld so brilliantly in this song and it's full of weird sounds, horns, twangy guitars and clanging drums. Really, really moody, but you just picture this stuff, you know, playing billiards with a midget until the rain stops. I oh, said... So brilliant then track three is dave the butcher this strange instrumental played on an old organ reminds me of a weird circus freak like todd browning's classic movie do you remember freaks just conjures that sort of imagery yeah it's a little bit of a strange little song that uh dave the butcher but it is pretty cool <laughs> Sixteen shells from a thirty or six. Now I used to have this on twelve inch single back in the early nineties. Um, yes, yeah, so some guy gave it to me at work because he knew I was into Tom Waits back then, and yeah, he gave me the the twelve inch. Obviously, long since gone. Um, it was released as a single in support of the live performance album, Big Time, which also was the movie. Um, it's an abrasive impressionistic ramble of a tune with a persistent jerking rhythm and oddball instruments starting off with a stabbing syncopated guitar riff that is doubled by a bass with a wet slap of snare on the toms unbelievable song and it's like proper growling and shouting tom bells and clangs going off everywhere absolutely that'll get your attention that'll wake you up straight away boom boom and you're off and in track six, 
is a completely different tempo and mood to the last song. This is called A Town With No Cheer. This melancholy tune is slower than the previous and basically it's about a guy singing about a pub with no booze. While Tom Waits was in Australia, he was going from Adelaide to somewhere and someone pointed out, oh, don't go in there, it's a town with no cheer. And basically it was a pub with no alcohol in it. Yeah. And in track seven is the wonderful In The Neighbourhood. And I love this. It's a lovely Waits tune with a really cool music video. I love the opening lyrics. Well, the egg chased the bacon round the frying pan. Beautiful. And that closes side one. That's side one done. So flipping over to side two. Track one, just another sucker on the vine. Lovely little instrumental to start off side two. And I love this instrumental because it conjures up images of Skid Row, you know, where... It's impoverished, urban, where the inhabitants are poor and possibly homeless and mostly drunks. Just beautiful. And it's only really short as well. And then track two is Frank's Wild Years. Tom just narrates a story about Frank, really, over this really cool jazzy music. Um, I may actually read it out at the end of this ramble, but I absolutely love this. And it sets up perfectly my absolute favourite song on the album. Track three, Sawfish Trombone. The standout instrument is a xylophone, creating an eerie effect and some deep pitch French horns. Tom's voice is speaking forward slash singing away through this freaky story. Bloody marvellous. It's so groovy. This is the best song on the album for me. Right, and track four, Down, Down, Down. This hard beat, fast track sounds more like a rockabilly song with cool guitar riffs, excellent keyboard sounds and Tom growling away like Captain Beefheart. Apparently Tom really liked Trout Mask Replica by Captain Beefheart and he was listening to that quite a lot prior to recording this album so you kind of think there'll be a little bit of influence. Then track five is Soldier's Things. Now, this is a bit more reminiscent of the old Tom music, but a beautiful, sad, depressing ballad. It's quite a beautiful little tune, really. Lovely little words. In track six is Gin Soaked Boy. A steady, twangy guitar riff plays along a simple drum beat and Tom's smoky, upbeat voice. <laughs> I got it bad for you. Do, 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 do. Brilliant. Um, that's followed up by... Track seven, which is Trouble Braids. Now, this sounds like African music to me, with his frantic drums, and it's just under a minute and a half of intense, upbeat rhythm, and Tom's really speaking quick over the top of it. Bloody marvellous. And Sawfish Trombones closes with Rainbirds. This slow-paced instrumental slows down and closes the album perfectly so yeah that's Swordfish Trombones um, kudos to the wife for getting it for me thank you beautiful, I absolutely love you you are the best and uh, it went beyond my expectations on how well it sounded I'm over the moon about that um, yeah so that's another vinyl play done another Tom Waits album to the collection and with another one on the way so I'm quite looking forward to that um, yeah so before I sign off and say ta -da for the ramble I'm just going to do a little read of the track Frank's Wild Years so bear with me a second Frank's Wild Years by Tom Waits well Frank settled down out in the valley and he hung his wild years on a nail that he drove through his wife's forehead. He sold used office furniture out there on San Fernando Road and assumed a $30,000 loan at 15.25% and put a down payment on a nice little two-bedroom place. His wife was a spent piece of used jet trash, made good bloody Marys, kept her mouth shut most of the time and had a little chihuahua named Carlos that had some kind of skin disease and was totally blind. 
They had a thoroughly modern kitchen, self-cleaning oven, the whole bit. Frank drove a little sedan. They were so happy. One night, Frank was on his way home from work and stopped at the liquor store, picked up a couple of Mickey's Big Mouths and drank them in the car on the way to the Shell station. He got a gallon of gas in a can, drove home, doused everything in the house, torched it, parked across the street laughing, watching it burn. All Halloween orange and chimney red. And then Frank put on a top 40 station, got on the Hollywood freeway and headed north. He never could stand that dog. Tom Waits. Awesome. Thought I'd share that with you. Right. So that's it for today, guys. Um, really over the moon now that I own Sawfish Trombones on vinyl. Marvellous. Um, the Waits collection will grow. Awesome. Awesome. Anyway, that's it for tonight, guys. Um, I'll be back with another ramble real soon. Mm -hmm.